Hello and welcome to Afternoon Chats brought to you by the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America or AFA. My name is Zulima Chavez and I'm the Support Center Manager for AFA. I'll be your host. The information presented in this chat is educational and not intended to provide individual medical advice. Please talk with your healthcare provider for advice about your personal health. Today, we're talking about Asthma Peak Month with Melanie Carver, AFA's Chief Mission Officer. Today's episode is produced independently by AFA and made possible by support from Amgen, so we thank them for sponsoring today's conversation. Before we jump into our questions, Melanie, can you tell us about your work as Chief Mission Officer? Hi, Salima, and thank you. From a broad perspective, it's my role to advance AFA's mission, which is to save lives and also drastically reduce the burden that asthma and allergies put on people in our community. We do this through different ways, including providing patient and caregiver support. We offer education for healthcare professionals. We do patient-centered research. And then we also advocate for policies that benefit our community. So for example, we were recently able to help reduce prescription costs for asthma inhalers. And as someone who lives with asthma and allergies myself, I have experienced what it's like to struggle to breathe or to do everyday activities or to figure out my health insurance. These are diseases that impact almost every aspect of your life and can be really challenging to manage, especially without support. So my work with AFA is very personal to me, and it's an honor to advocate for my community. That's wonderful. Thank you so much for sharing, Melanie, and I am definitely thankful to be a part of this organization as well. Now, let's get started with our questions. Melanie, many people experience worsening asthma in September. How common is this? It's a lot more common than people may know. So during the month of September, asthma attacks, hospital stays, and deaths tend to be the highest than any other time in the year. And this is why we call it the Asthma Peak Month. The third week of September is Asthma Peak Week, and this is when asthma episodes typically hit their highest point of the year. In fact, out of the entire year, about 25% of asthma-related hospital stays for children happen in September. And why does asthma peak happen? What causes it? Well, first, let's talk about what asthma is, and it helps explain why it can get worse in the late summer and early fall. When you have asthma, your airways are more narrow than they should be, and that makes it a lot harder to breathe. That narrowing comes from inflammation or swelling. It also happens because the small muscles around the airway squeeze or constrict and tighten those airways. And then lastly, when you have asthma, you have extra mucus in your airways as well. So all three of those create a situation where it's harder for you to breathe. And when a person with asthma gets exposed to certain things, it then triggers those small muscles to squeeze or constrict. It triggers that swelling in the airways. And in September, people with asthma come into contact with several asthma triggers all at once. So the first is weed pollen, and especially ragweed. A lot of people with asthma have allergies, and your allergies can actually make your asthma worse. Ragweed pollen starts to peak in the late summer and into the like August and September time frame. The second trigger that people encounter is mold. As trees and other plants start to drop their leaves and decay, the mold counts go up. And for some regions in the U.S., September is the beginning of the rainy season. And so all that extra moisture encourages mold growth outdoors and indoors. With September being the end of summer and the beginning of fall, with that, there can be other factors like extreme weather. So heat waves, thunderstorms, hurricanes or other windstorms. And that coincides with wildfire season. In the West, which is where I live, the fire season exposes people to a lot of air pollution. You're breathing in those small particles that pollute the air from the fires. 
and that pollution can spread across the country. So even if you don't live near a common fire zone, you may still be breathing in air pollution that's coming from those fires. One of the biggest reasons that we see the asthma spikes in September is that it's back to school time. Millions of children are returning to school in August and September. And when they do so, they're entering into school buildings that have poor air quality and mold. And this timing lines up with when respiratory infections spike as well. Right now, there is currently a COVID-19 surge. And once kids return to school, not only will they encounter COVID-19, but other respiratory infections like the flu, RSV, and colds, all of these easily spread in crowded indoor spaces. Thank you for sharing that, Melanie. I think this is such great information for people to know in order to prepare for asthma peak. And what age group would you say is most affected by asthma peak month? Well, kids in school tend to get sick first and then they take home that sickness to their families. So the number of hospital stays peaks for school age children first, then preschool children and then adults. A lot of schools start the school year just before or just after Labor Day. And this means that more people are in crowded indoor spaces all at once, and that means germs will spread. When you get exposed to a respiratory infection, there's an incubation period, which is the time between when you get infected and when you start showing symptoms. And by about the third week in September is when the effects of those infections are seen and people with asthma end up in the hospital. I myself have asthma, and I have found that knowing my triggers and avoiding them has been helpful in preventing asthma flare-ups and symptoms. What should people do to manage their asthma triggers? I also have asthma, and this is a hard time of year for my lungs as well. Um, one thing that is really helpful is to take notes. So after you have an asthma episode, just write down some information into your phone or on paper. What were you doing before your asthma started worsening? Are there any patterns that you notice? Then it's really important to book an appointment with your doctor and be ready to talk with them about your symptoms, what you were doing when your asthma got worse, what medicines you have, how you're using them. This will help them work with you to figure out what triggers your asthma. They might do additional tests like allergy testing too. Um, and then once you know what your triggers are, you can make a plan for how to manage or avoid those triggers. For students with asthma, this means working with the school to make a health plan that will accommodate you know, the student's needs and help prevent asthma from worsening at school. The second part is something everyone can do to lower their risk of complications or worsening asthma, and that's to get vaccinated. Respiratory infections are a leading reason why people with asthma end up in the hospital. So make an appointment now or go to a walk-in pharmacy and get your yearly flu shot and your updated COVID-19 vaccine. Um, these vaccines are for everyone age six months and older, and there are a few exceptions. So when you see your doctor, ask them any questions that you may have, and then check to see if there's any other vaccines that are recommended for your situation and for your health. Those are great tips, and vaccines are one way to reduce the impact of respiratory infections. You mentioned that many school buildings have poor air quality. What should people know about indoor air quality and how it impacts your health? Yes, it's really important to have good ventilation and proper air filters or air cleaning so that you can reduce the irritants, the allergens, and the germs that are circulating in the air. Um, many people don't know that indoor air can be much more polluted than outdoor air. And this is a really big topic of concern that we can do a deeper dive on in an upcoming podcast. Um, pretty soon, AFA will be publishing an update to our state honor roll report. And what that report does is it assesses how well schools across the U.S. are accommodating students with asthma and allergies. And so it takes into account things like having policies to address air quality on campus. There's also some federal legislation that we're supporting that would improve indoor air quality. And so um, that's another way that people can get involved is to 
communicate with their elected officials to encourage uh, schools and other public buildings to uh, address their indoor air quality. I definitely, when it comes to indoor air quality being more polluted than outdoor air, that was very surprising to me as well. So I'm glad that you shared that. And it sounds like AFA is going to be releasing some awesome things coming up soon. Can you talk about what else AFA is doing to address the asthma peak in September? Yes. So we will have additional guests join us to talk about asthma treatments and managing asthma, especially in schools. We also have a TV PSA that will be airing nationally to help us raise awareness and help people prepare. Soon, we will also be publishing our Asthma Capitals report, and this report helps raise awareness about the nationwide impacts of asthma. It ranks cities across the U.S. on how challenging those cities are for people with asthma. The aim for the report is to inspire action. We've worked with many cities um, who have ranked high on the list in the past to help them implement new policies or programs so that they could improve their asthma outcomes. So we know it's possible to reduce asthma rates and prevent deaths. And this report highlights where we can focus our efforts to get to healthier environments and communities. The 2024 Asthma Capitals Report will be released during Asthma Peak Week, and people can find it on our website at asthmacapitals.com. Melanie, thank you so much for your time today. It was wonderful speaking with you and talking about the September Asthma Peak. If you have questions about asthma or just need to talk to someone, our Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America online community is always open. You can find it at aaflikefrankaorg slash join. Before we say goodbye today, we'd like to thank Amgen again for their kind sponsorship that helped make this possible. Thank you everyone for joining and I hope you have a wonderful day.